Shut up, compressor. Yeah, low shoot from low Hey everyone, Matt here with Tugs Models, and welcome to episode 3 of the Zukimura F4G Wild Weasel build. In the last installment, we got through the cockpit and basically got it glued into the fuselage. But we still have to get the fuselage glued together. You know, the, the halves are loose, the tail to go, etc. And to do that, I've got some ideas, but first I recorded a bunch of stuff way back when I started this build dealing with the intakes and shit like that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that up quickly because that kind of was like a bit of a side quest that is now coming back to being uh, kind of important. So let's get that sorted out and then pop back to the present. Okay, next up, let's get a start on the intake trunk, shall we? Now, these are typical Zuki Mira. I built them on the F4D. They were fine. One thing you get to deal with is ejector pin marks. Now, the biggest thing to watch out with with these Zukimir intakes is the way they go together. They're joined on the inside by these three pins. And that's great, but what happens... Let's see if I can show this real fast. When you join it... Cool, right? Everything goes together. Except, if you look, these are all mismatched, right? And that's easy. You can correct them. You can adjust these things over. The problem is when you're trying to clean up and sand and you push a little bit too hard on one of these sides and all of a sudden goes boop like that. So definitely some some uh, gluing it and letting it sit, letting these things really weld together is pretty important to get, get a good job out of it. At the same time, ultimately who really gives too much of a shit because you're not going to be seeing much down the intakes anyway just based on the way the fandom shaped, having built these things before, it's one of those where a lot of the effort's really going to be wasted. Okay, now that the black CA has had time to cure out, it's time to come in here and sand it back down. And for this, I really like using smaller, skinnier sanding sticks like this. And a little bit of wet sanding, basically just you know getting your finger wet. And just kind of coming in here and doing this sort of business. Okay, and now that we've sanded these out, we're just about ready to go ahead and glue things, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a bit of a rinse and a little bit of priming first, even though we're gonna be obliterating some primer on the sides here. No reason we can't get some of it established, right? Okay, and now that we've got our primer on these, things aren't completely erased, but again, who cares? Because once you're looking down this way, you won't see it anyway. But now it's time to go ahead and some of this shit locked in, so let's go ahead and grab the extra thin. I'm gonna start with the center truss portions here, because those are gonna be kind of what they are. Okay, now the intakes are together. Overall looking pretty decent. Got as you can see some early primer sprayed in here too. Basically, we don't have any real significantly bad lines. We just have, you know, the typical join lines that you need to fill for intakes. And honestly, the one that matters the most is this interior line right here, because that's the only one you're really going to have a decent view of when the Phantom's together. These ones over here, I mean, you got a whole intake kind of up here, too, you got to remember. And just getting that view is going to be a challenge, but still the first bit of this run. Uh, down the, you know, kind of down the middle, not really that big of an issue. And anything past about here, also, you're just not going to see. But we still got some filling to do, so some black CA on a toothpick. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the back and just kind of dab my way forward with this stuff. So basically like that. So in the ongoing course of preparing the intakes, uh, you know, more sanding and all that kind of stuff. I think we're in a pretty good place with these at this point. Need to add some paint to see how it goes. But I'm also working on the forward intake sections as well. They need a little bit of work. Uh, there's a sprue gate right here, so you got to be careful with removing that. Also, 
again, just like the rest of the kit, there's this kind of textury thing going on. Also, you might notice right up here, there is a mold seam running right there, and it has a little partner down here on the bottom side. And so to remove these, my preferred method is to use one of these ceramic X-Acto blades made by a company called Slice. And just come in here and ever so lightly just kind of worry it away. You know, if this were like a bare metal thing, I might worry a little bit more, but we're dealing with Euro 1 camo. <laughs> All right, so we got that one done. All right, now it's time to get these intakes painted white. So for this, I'm starting out with some Tamiya LP4 white. I got Tamiya coverage, etc., etc. Even though, for some reason, I seem to have a pretty thin mix going on tonight. Okay, so for shits and giggles, just to see what this intake is up against in actuality, let's go ahead and see here. This is the intake. Of the F4. So we're going to have to play with that a little bit because something's not happy in here. Yikes. Okay. So, that is what we're looking at. Well, there you go. That's what we're looking at. And that is the all you're ever going to see of the intake. Got to keep in mind the back of it's going to be dark. And in addition to this, we're also going to have... forward rampy bit up there like so so you know, again it's almost going to be impossible to really get a good view of this side of the intake because the fuselage will get in the way so we have back down there again dark So, I mean, good enough is fine here, essentially what it all boils down to. Okay, I'm sure that was fun and maybe a little bit disjointed, but basically it gets us into a situation where we have our intake glued into the lower fuselage, and we've got the wings kind of glued in place, and we've got the gear bays installed, and I close the AUX doors. I know on the ground they're open. I really don't give a fuck. I just didn't want to deal with it. So, they're closed. So, with that, oh, and I would like to point out the belly strap here for the, the people who care about the undersides of things. Uh, the belly strap is present on the Zuki Mira Phantom. So, cool. Anyway, the reason that I needed to get all that out of the way is the Phantom, the Zuki Mira design, is crazy floppy all through, basically from the second half of the cockpit back to the tail. This whole thing is super loosey-goosey, and so when we're trying to glue stuff up here in the spine, there's no good way to grip things to make sure everything goes together the way it should, and I'm not a fan of that. So, essentially what I'm going to be doing is, hold on, is more or less just using the lower fuselage to help make sure that everything gets kind of seated properly so we go off on a wonderful fit journey here this way everything's more or less kind of in place i'm not going to say it's perfect that'd be crazy but we at least have a bit of rigidity going into this that we can play with and our next step is to go ahead and start thinking about this 
spine piece that is going to be going in. So that's this lovely thing. I do like the spine insert solution because unlike the older Hasegawa kits, you don't have to go and deal with filling and cleaning up a seam along all of these lovely details. It's still a bit of a pain in the ass. And I think, um, you know, the, the one piece designs definitely have an advantage there, but this isn't so bad. Anyway, need to drill a hole in it here to install some sort of antenna. So That didn't sound good. Okay, so next up, it's time for happy glue time. Happy glue time is when we stick fuselage halves together. And for that, I want some extra thin, quick set. Right here. Yoink. benefit of quick setting stuff sets quick this is one of my favorite things about the Zuki mirror kit is the underside and not having to deal with the uh, like the Academy kit has the really janky fit of the heat shield to the fuselage and this one that's not even an issue it would be with the Mang, but I mean I've kind of played with it and I think that they actually got the heat shield fit pretty dang right so as long as you can pull off that engineering feat, it's awesome. But if you can't, it's going to suck. But this thing, you know, by just bisecting it and having it be part of the aircraft, part of the fuselage halves, most of the length of the run here, you're just hiding under the, uh, under the arrestor hook where who gives a fuck? It won't even be seen. So that's nice. And then back here, it's not that bad of a join. I need to take a bit more care to clean this up than I have in the past. I know on my F4D, uh, I just was lazy back here and didn't really clean it up to the degree that I should have. But if we can get a nice little pressure bead going in there, that'll ease things along too. So, that is the fuselage getting joined. And looking pretty good. Uh, there's a little piece here, M27, that needs to be installed. So I'm going to do that, and then it's going to be moving on to all this fun bullshit, which we're going to have to take the, the whole thing apart again to make that work. But the reason, again, for all those holes, if you watched the last installment, is to make sure that this thing fits and aligns the way that we want it to. So, not by doing that. All right, let's go ahead and get the avionics bay door otherwise known as R17, installed right there. So that's basically all there is to it. This one just fits in place. You want to make sure that you clean up the sides and especially the front where the sprue gate is. But once you do that, it's a little puppy. And now let's go ahead and get the dorsal spine installed. I don't think we're actually going to have any... Yeah, there's not actually a lot of need for the toothpick. It's kind of the opposite. I just want to make sure that we got... Overall, a good join happening here. And I can already foresee there's going to be some light gap filling that needs to happen here. There's probably going to be a lot of masking tape. And a decent amount of... 3M red putty going on in this thing. Frustrating. Um, you know, it shouldn't have to be that way, but this is a dicey engineering. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> uh, basically, I'm just going to let this dry up for a little while. Then come in, do some masking so that we can protect some of those rivets and get some putty going on in here. This isn't that big of a deal. It's just not the prettiest necessarily join in the world. Okay, next up, we've got the radar warning antenna, the R-Haw. I'm sure there's some cool way to pronounce it. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, but this is what replaced the Vulcan cannon in the F4G's nose. Double checking my fit right now. that up just a little bit. It seems to be a 
couple of nubbins on here that want to get in the way. This is definitely a part though where I'm like, does it have to be two pieces? Surely we've gotten to the point in our molding technology where this could have been slide molded in such a way that we don't need to fight about it and make it two pieces. But what the fuck do I know, right? So it's funny, I don't know if I have the patience to sit here and go through the apply, remove, apply, remove, etc., fight the ghost teams, etc., of tackling this awesome spine thing with 3M putty. So instead I'm using some ammo black CA. This stuff is pretty solid at filling seams, but I'm anticipating I'll need to get through a couple of, or you know, maybe like two applications to some of the dicier sections. And this is tricky as fuck with an airbrush needle and all these rivets right on top of it. And I guess if it were me designing this kit and it had to have a spinal insert like this, fine. But what I would have done is I would have moved it down, I don't know, two millimeters, put it right in the middle of this line instead, and then just say, hey, remove the line. Then you're not right up against ass loads of rivets and it's not as big of a deal but that's always been my thing like I know a lot of people love it when kit manufacturers put panel lines and kit lines on the same kind of thing but is then if you have to go in there and fix it you're kind of fucked whereas with these you can you know if, you, if this were in the middle down here you could just remove it, just erase it. Instead, you have to very carefully erase it to avoid getting into all this lovely rivet detail that we want to keep around because the spine is a focal point of the aircraft. Okay, so I've got all of the dorsal spine kind of blocked in here with black CA. Kind of let that set up a bit and then come in and remove it. I might try some CA remover and see how that goes in terms of just, you know, kind of getting getting it out from around the, uh, the specific gaps that I'm trying to fill. I may just have to resort to sanding. We'll see. Uh, yeah, pain in the ass though. So next, while that's doing its thing, I want to go up here and look at the nose. The nose of this kit is interesting. So, as you can see, it's got this inner ring around the front. And we've got the radome. And in here, come on, we've got these sort of flattened off edges, which correspond to the radome. And so you mount those up. And, oh fuck, it's wider than the fuselage. Look at that we have some fun gap stuff going on. Plus I've got this like frustratingly persistent little bullshit going on up here. Let me try to fix that a little bit actually. I was all stressing out about what the fuck I'm gonna do about this too narrow fuselage situation. But then I realized what happens when you install the Arha antenna fairing thing down here. Is this thing spreads out the fuselage just a little bit. And that lets you get a much better fit. Not 100%, but better. So now I'm having to face the situation of I need to spread the fuselage more than what the fairing is going to get me. And so, I came up with this so brilliant that it's just completely fucking stupid. It's basically what it comes down to. It's essentially most of my modeling, it feels like just stupid ass 
kludge jobs to get to the next step. So basically come in here, plug this fucker in, make sure everything is aligned up top, tape it down, just like so, right? Then while we're holding it, kind of making sure that we've got alignment down here, I've basically got this little thing with the feet from the F4B build. And all I'm going to do is just basically shove it down here until we get a good tight fit on the radome. Just a little spreading action. And I've got a little tiny, you know, sort of bump type thing up here. But that's something that sanding can help kind of just take care of. Sure as shit is easier than dealing with a gap on the sides, right? So yeah, basically just kind of let it do its thing. And I'm going to leave the feet in here overnight just to let everything really cure up. Give us a good amount of strength and then we'll come in kick those out clean up the upper bend right there just a little bit and come in and deal with the fucking spine yay okay now that the fun of the spine insert has had a bit of time to set up i'm basically taking a little bit of a sanding stick and just coming in here and sanding back the CA. And the thing I like about this black CA is it does sand back without too much fuss. And where it needs more fuss, there's not any detail like underneath here I'm too worried about blowing out. It's more the stuff up top, so. Okay, so here is the cleaned up ventral spine. And in a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and put some primer on this and see how it's looking and see what still has to be cleaned up and I think what will be okay. Before I do that though, let's go ahead and put the warning antenna on. Go, this thing is in halves, I've joined it, I've cleaned it up. I'm fully expecting it to be a little bit loose, yep, a little bit loose on the sides because I had to spread the fuselage to accommodate the nose, sigh, and I'm gonna spray a little bit of, I'm not gonna call it primer because it's not, but a little bit of MRP black just to kind of check and see how all this shit's going down. I mean, I think this side's not that awful. This side sucks, though. Got a couple areas that definitely need some cleanup. You know, I feel like I made a good faith effort to remove these join lines without taking out the rivets, too. But ultimately, they're just two right on top of each other to really make that possible. So instead, I just kind of said, fuck it and got some 3M Super Red Putty out. It's uh, one of their Acryl line. It's a big fucking thing of putty for automotive applications, basically. And the thing I like about the stuff is it flows really well, and if you, you know, layer it in there and kind of let it sit, it, it will shrink, but if you layer it in there and let it sit, it will shrink, and then you're done. And so... You know, if you're patient, which I'm not the best at, you can get a nice line like this that you can then come in, add some water, and sand back. Or you can get some uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner and a Q-tip or a silicon brush, whatever, and remove shit that way, too. Uh, for these, I'm going to sand, I think, back here with the tail. I may well try doing the... Uh, q-tip method and just removing what I can that way because I want to keep that pretty intact and that's okay if that shrinks back a tiny little bit in there but man this is just frustrating 
Zuki Mira kit has a lot going for it, and then it has all this shit happening too. So, uh, I've got this old, old Flexifile medium grit, which is now no longer anywhere close to medium grit, that I'm basically just going to sacrifice to this job. So, some water, and then let's get to sanding. But the reason I keep coming back to it is nothing feathers quite as good. This stuff is fantastic at feathering out. Particularly in like something like this where you have this really shallow join. Like it'll get us to that point where shit's just just right. Okay, so now that I've been sanding through all this fun with the dorsal spine. I'm using a little trick to hopefully avoid some of the lacquer-based putty shrinkage and ghost seam bullshit that can happen with stuff like this. And that is Tamiya paint with X20A. Because it's, you know, straight up acrylic. It shouldn't be pulling in the lacquer melty bullshit that something thin with MLT can do or that lacquers can do. That, you know... Something like an MRP can set off. So we're just going to see how this goes. And I'm going to cross my fingers that I can use this up here to my advantage. Yeah, it's weird. I haven't sprayed with X20A in quite a while, but at least whatever ratio I've hit here, it seems like a, a nice sweet spot. Spraying quite nicely. Okay, so now that the spine is getting into a decent place, it's time to start thinking about joining everything together. But before I can do that, I need to attend to a few things here in the wing lower fuselage area. So I've got the intakes already installed, but I need to install the compressor faces in there back here. I need to paint and install the main part of the engines back here, and I need to go ahead and get the wing tips in. It's not critical to get those in at this point, but this is when I have the most freedom to move around and maneuver things. So from that perspective, it just kind of makes sense, right? And so, these things, I've played around multiple different ways to get these to work. The um, problem is you've set the thing down flat. It sits flat right here, but you get movement on the wings. Do, 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 do. And so, finding the exact right angle, getting it all lined up, and getting, crucially, the pressure in. Because, you know, if you get these at the right height, okay, that's one thing. But, you know, they need the pressure in to really seat and all that. It's a lot. And so I figure, you know, now that I've, again, cleaned these up as best I can along the seams, just getting in here and getting this good join in place, right? It's probably about the best that I can hope for. And so where are you at, my extra thin goodness? Basically, I'm kind of holding it just inside the hinge on the bottom, keeping that all pressed together, and just getting a good bead going here up top. There, we've got wing tips. Next up, let's get these compressor faces sorted. They're buried at the back of the intake. You're not going to see much of them. But for shits and giggles, we're painting these with a mix of MRP titanium and a little bit of MRP dark gold gray. <laughs> the, the labels had better days. Uh, I managed to spill some on my hand and wiped it off the label, and half the label came with it. The reason that the gray is mixed in titanium here is that a lot of the reference photos, particularly of, you know, something... Like a wild weasel, by the time of the paint scheme I'm going for on this one, they've been around a while. Um, 
you know, at least a good 10, 15 years, whatever. So these compressor faces aren't all shiny and new. And mixing the gray in there definitely cuts down on the, the flash. So come on, you. And then we can hit it with a little wash to, you know, really high or really uh, play up the compressor blades themselves. And that should look just fine. Hanging out at the end of an intake. And next up, a little bit of a wash on the compressor faces so that they can be. So that they can be seen, you know, if somebody actually does happen to look all the way down the intakes at the right angle, there will be a little bit of detail there waiting for them. Well, after about 30 seconds of consideration, I've decided I'm just not going to fuck with even half-assed weathering up in the exhaust tunnel here. There's just no reason. I mean, even from these angles, which are pretty much impossible to get to with the aircraft itself, you just can't see much, even with this ideal lighting. Once you slap an exhaust on top of it, you can see even less. You know, the fact that the shape of the thing comes down in diameter as it approaches the exit here means that a lot of that stuff is just, it's kind of like the sidewalls on a Phantom under that sill overhang. You just can't see it. And I'm happy enough with the way that the afterburner ring looks. So, or flame holder, whatever it's called. So let's just glue this fucker, right? This all feels a bit superfluous, but, you know, hey, if you've ever glued things, you kind of know how this goes. Okay, now that we've got all this sorted, let's go ahead and get this glued in. And I'm not even going to bother stripping off the tape, because it will never be seen. It won't interfere with anything in any way. Yeah, so it's just there. So first we're going to absolutely fill this up. Use that to align on. Once that's in place, some quick setting extra thin up here. Around that join. And that should get that engine nicely situated. So next up, it's time to go ahead and get the fuselage installed. So I know I've taken this off and put it back on enough times that you all should be familiar with how this goes right now, but this part here goes in between the intakes. This kind of lines up back here. I feel like this gets harder every time I do it. Yeah, everything just kind of fits up like that. We do have some shit that we need to clean back here uh, in terms of fit. You know what? That's what we need to fix right there, isn't it? Okay, so back here, we've got these little tabs on the lower fuselage. You can barely see them right in there. Those things you need to kind of hook in there first and then they will help locate the ass end back here, which makes all this stuff fit much more cleanly. Yeah, that'll do. And then up here, make sure that all this stuff seats into place where it needs to. Cool. Well, that's a fun couple of billion things to focus on at the same time right there. Okay, next up. I think before I really commit to glue, I want to go ahead and get... There's two pieces that need to go over, like right here on the other side. And they loop all the way around this. And so 
think I want to get those in place first. Okay. So this piece, all it has to do is come in and sit in here just like that. So I want to go ahead and get it situated nicely in there. Basically like that. Let's go ahead and Next up, let's go ahead and get a bit of the stuff up here glued up. Okay, so I feel like this episode is kind of spun out of my control just a little bit. But here we are with the Zucamira F4G really coming along, advancing nicely toward the painting stage. Basically, I've got the fuselage together, got this bullshit dorsal spine cleaned up. I've got the wings together and on. I've got the lower fuselage mounted to the upper fuselage. We have the nose, the radome, the warning receiver, etc. All that stuff in a pretty good place. I've even got it so that I can pull on and off the stabilators. The port one is really tight. The starboard one considerably looser, but they can come on and off as needed. I think I might need to go in here and add the strengthening plates. There's a little outline form there, but I need to look into that. On the underside, um, there's still some cleanup that needs to go on, especially up front here. We're getting there. Uh, this is overall a somewhat rockier build than the Mang from a airframe perspective, but we'll see kind of if the balance shifts again as it gets into details. So what is up next? Up next, I need to go ahead and do a little bit of interior detailing in the outer intakes that fit right here. Then I can install those. We've got control surfaces to deal with. We've got cleanup on the front end down here. We've got you know, to install the mid frame for the canopy. I've got to work on all the rat's nest shit back here. Basically several things to kind of occupy us as we head toward actually painting it. So with that, I'm going to leave this here for now. Thank you all for watching. Again, be sure to keep an eye out for future videos in this build series, as well as the Meng F4G Wild Weasel. I've got two weasel builds going on simultaneously. And of course, the Weasel Off, which takes comparative looks at both kits side by side, trying a slightly different format here from the, uh, the Flank Off that I did several years ago. And if you want early videos, you know, see them a few days before everybody else, see behind the scenes, ask questions, etc., there's always patreon.com slash tugesmodels. And until next time, see y'all later.